everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside, all ready to go with another big championship wrestling. By golly, I'll tell you what we've got in the half today. We've got uh, a couple of tag matches. We've got some single matches, a lot of action today. Opening Dave. single match yes. today, Bub Smith is going to be in here, and he's got his work cut out for him because he's going to be going against Billy Robinson in the opener today. Also, we'll be looking at Ken Wayne against Paul Correa. First look at Paul, he's out of South America. Then, a tag team match, which will have Tojo Yamamoto and Sonny King on one side of the ring. On the other side, it'll be Coco Ware and Steve Regal in tag team action. Not the only tag team match, though. The Assassins will be in here, too. They will be going against Rick Morton, and Rick will have as his partner Big Red out of Atlanta. Ooh, yeah, what an expiration of time match that is. Two great tag matches coming up right down there. And we're going to be looking forward to seeing Manchester, England's Billy Robinson in action in our opening bout here. We also have some great footage that Jarrett Welch cameras have picked up around the coliseums and arenas throughout the entire territory. We'll have all of it today. Championship wrestling. Get ready for it. We're going to be back in just a moment. together and both go down at the 14 minute mark with 16 minutes to wrestle. Ellering trying to cheer Billy Robinson back to his feet. Got his hand out but Billy can't get to him. Oh Robinson straight up in the air drops him down with that backbreaker one. Ellering and the other assassin. Robinson thinks I think he won it. Did he get a three count? One, two, he got it. He wins with partner Paul Ellering, Billy Robinson. 250 pounds from Jackson, Tennessee. On the left of your screen, Bub Smith. And going against him from Manchester, England. 241 pounds, Billy Robinson. This match won fall 15 minute time limit. Referee is Paul Morton. Okay, we're about ready for it. The referee says, do it. We're doing it. Here we go with this opening bow, baby. Billy Robinson extends the hand. Bob Smith refuses. Billy with a headlock. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Bob, Bob Smith out of the mat. Smith, using his head there, he uh, got over to the ropes. Billy Robinson, of course, heavy favorite in the match over Bob Smith. Bob's been in there with a few, but I don't know if he's ever seen anybody with a class wrestling-wise that Billy Robinson has, Davey. That's true. Bob's got the size, but uh, when it comes to the moves... And the experience. Whoa, and the jackknife. Billy Robinson, the favorite. Up, quickly back on his feet, quickly off his feet. Look at Billy Robinson. He's just set, waiting to counter whatever move Smith comes at him with. Back on the ropes. Bub Smith, not with a nice clean break, fired a couple of right hands. Billy Robinson brought that right hand back. Chop, upper arm, forearm. Neck breaker by Billy Robinson. Billy, oh, suplexes Bob Smith, all 250 pounds of it. Two minute mark gone right now in the match. Smith off his feet and dropped across the knee. Yeah. One, two, three. Hey, the assassin. Jumping into the ring, Billy Robinson has won it. The match over. The assassin picks up Bob Smith, throws him out of the ring. Whoa, he nailed Billy right across that arm with it strung out. Hey, come on. Let's get somebody in here. Robinson. Here comes Rick.
Rick Morton. Oh, one assassin standing guard. See if he can get somebody else over here. Here comes Coco Ware. The assassin continue to work on it. Oh, he is hurt. Billy is just screaming in that ring. He caught Robinson, who had a pin on Smith, and dropped with the arm reversed right across it. Here comes Paul oh. Ellery. One assassin working on Billy Robinson, the other one trying to head off everybody that comes in to try to help him out. Coco has gotten to him. The assassins are now out of the ring. Yeah, Robinson's hurt. Get somebody in yeah, there. Aren't they? Hey, come on, you guys. Is that, get out of here. Is that you? the best that yeah. you have yeah. in yeah. professional wrestling? Is that your wrestler's okay. wrestler? Just get on out of here. We don't need it. Billy Robinson down. Yeah, I wouldn't move that arm. Don't let him move the arm. The assassins, right as Robinson had to pin on Bub Smith, jumped in the ring. Mm. Yeah, keep the arm still, Eddie, if you can. Okay. Uh, they're helping. Uh, boy, he had that. It was backward when he came down and hit on that thing. Well, for whatever consolation it was, the win goes to uh, Billy Robinson. Very little at this time. We're going to take time out. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. And, uh, Billy out here now, as I told you, the elbow is already boom, puffed up on a real bad swelling. Okay, uh, action continues on Championship Wrestling. Uh, the Jarrett Welch cameras were in line to see what was a classic confrontation. This was a title against title situation. The AWA World Heavyweight Champion, Nick Bockwinkle. The CWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jerry the King Lawler. They're meeting in there. We were there. Take a look at it. And takes a right. As the AWA champ fires back. And Bachwango. Twenty minutes past, seventy minutes to wrestle as Nick Bachwinkle nails Lawler from behind. at Bockwinkle running Lawler into the turnbuckle. Takes a shot at Hart, misses him. Here's a cover, one, two, and Lawler takes him off. That was really not Nick's best shot at a pin, but I think because he had been worked over by Lawler, he took the opportunity to go for the pin. Slams Lawler's head down into the canvas. With a hair, the referee saying let go, and he does right over the rope. Look at Bockwinkle. With a knee on Lawler right across that rope. He may have him right here. Bockwinkle. Comes off on Lawler. One, two, and just barely Lawler gets out of it. Wiggle nails Lawler. Oh, 
They're both down and battling to get up. Bachwinkle up first, covers Lawler. And again, Lawler shakes him out of it. Nick expending a lot of energy. He's trying to put Lawler away. Big body slam. Whip. Backdrop. Cover. Nope. His foot's over the rope. It'll be a break. Bachwinkle, I'm sure, thinks he's won it. Nope. He heard the referee say his foot's on the rope, and he got up, went right to work. Oh, look at Lawler. This guy has great stamina, remember that. Normally, Bachwinkle would be favored in terms of a long match because of the fact that he has wrestled so many championship matches. But Lawler, as all of you know, has tremendous stamina and great recuperative power. Lawler bang on Bachwinkle with that right. He finally worked on that head, and he's got him bleeding. Lawler with the elbow. Bockwinkle in real trouble. And Lawler puts him down on the canvas. The blood on Lawler is Bockwinkle's. And Bachwinkle is bleeding profusely from the nose. Also from the left eye. With 20, 25 minutes, 25 minutes into action. Bockwinkle coming up off the deck. Boy, he is covered with blood. And here he goes after Lawler. Over the shoulder and down. Fires Lawler on that atomic drop. Lawler bounces over the top rope. The referee does not consider a disqualification because he saw it clearly. Hart jumped out of the chair while the referee is counting on Lawler. Hart jumped out and nailed Bockwinkle. Lawler is back in at the count of seven. He covers Bockwinkle. One, two. Bockwinkle taps him. Lawler gets up. Bockwinkle goes after Hart. He pounds Jimmy. And the referee grabs Lawler's arm as he was getting ready to hit. Bockwinkle with a chain, that's going to be it. A disqualification on Lawler. The winner. 26 minutes and 43 seconds. The winner is Nick Bockwinkle by disqualification. The referee hands Bockwinkle his belt. Lawler grabs his.
Well, I'll tell you what, that was that was an interesting match from several, the you know the 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 fact that Bach Winkle and Lawler going against each other right off the bat. Jimmy Hart got his from Bachwinkle. Indeed. Referee Jerry Calhoun <laughs> really was given an effort in there. The end result, of course, uh, the disqualification on the situation. But it was a spirited bout, to say the very least. Nick Bachwinkle and Jerry the King Lawler. We've got more action coming up. We're going to get back to it in just a moment. <laughs> Tennessee at 200 pounds, Ken Wayne. This match, one fall, 15 minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Okay, the jacket of Ken Wayne is off. Paul Correa, initial appearance on our championship wrestling. Bell time, we are off and running. For those of you uh, who have inquired already about uh, Billy Robinson, I, I can only tell you we are going to keep posted best we can on it. Billy has uh, been taken from the premises to uh, have the arm x-rayed, and that's about all I can say right at the moment. Ken Wayne fired into it. Paul Correa out of South America. And over the top goes Correa. And once again, Correa. The name, remember Joaquin Correa? Joaquin Correa, yeah. yes indeed. I, I, I really have not had a chance to talk to Paul to find out whether there's any relation. You gotta believe there is. One, and that's all, Ken Wayne. Correa's gonna find out he's in there against a tough little customer. It's Ken Wayne, while I don't approve of all of the nifty little things he does every now and then, he'll tell you he can go. He mares Korea over and down. Wayne holding on to the side headlock on the canvas. Paul Korea on the deck. First appearance out of South America against Ken Wayne. Korea quickly into a head scissors. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Wayne, I believe, is saying he pulled his hair. Yeah, that's what he said. He had my hair repeating it. Count of one, right shoulder comes up. No trouble for a pin here. What did he say? Did you hear? Ken Wayne said, hey, what are you doing? And referee said, uh, your shoulders were down. And when they're down, I count. <laughs> Wayne back up on his feet. And Paul Correa likewise as now. They circle. Set toward the center of the ring. Ken Wayne goes in. Ties up with him. Woo! Forearm to the midsection. That one was not a forearm. That one was. Well, two out of three ain't bad, Dave. <laughs> two of them were legal, the third one was. Down on the back of the neck of Paul Correa and Ken Wayne. Picks him up. He's got him in a slam position. Drives him down into the mat. Ken Wayne with a cover. One, two, but that's all. Correa shot him off of there. He didn't roll him off. Boy, he really fired him off. Into the ropes, Korea takes that forearm from Ken Wayne. And Korea with a whip to the corner in the turnbuckles. Goes in after it. And Ken Wayne puts him over the top rope. The top that rope. should be it. Yes, it is. Paul Korea climbed up on the rope. And Ken Wayne, no, no, disqualification over, oh, and Korea, drop kick on Ken Wayne. Ken had dumped him over the top rope in a disqualification, Dave, as uh, Korea had whipped Ken back into the corner. And as Korea went into the corner to go on the ropes to get after Ken, Ken Scooped underneath uh, and took him right over the top rope and an automatic disqualification in there on Ken Wayne by referee Jerry Calhoun. No question in. about it. Two minutes, 57 seconds. Korea time. gets a, his first appearance win right here over Ken Wayne by disqualification and uh, a good spirited match while it was underway. We uh, reminiscent of the... Uh, Billy Robinson situation yep. right there was a situation similar in that Hector Guerrero involved in a match with the Assassins. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, when they 
when they don't feel like they're getting the recognition, they'll resort to stuff like trying to say, hey, I broke that guy's arm, I broke that guy's ribs. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did that. As a matter of fact, I remember on a couple of instances, uh, Jerry the King Lawler in the past. Remember the rib-breaking situation? Yes, I sure figure do. it's a great way to get some, well, anyhow, I'm just give you the editorial comment. I don't think too much of that. Uh, Hector Guerrero, we've had a lot of people asking about how uh, Hector was. Uh, we were able to uh, get the Jarrett Welch camera to uh, hear a statement from Hector. Let's take a listen to it. Well, my arm, I can't say too much for it now, but the ligaments in it. The doctor told me it'll be a couple of days before I can even do anything with it. And uh, it seems to be getting better, but there's times that just the pain and and the first well, it's just the frustration of being tied up and not be able to do anything that's what makes me mad or oh, do I want a shot do I want a shot for those assassins I want to get them with my bare hands not only do I want that I want to meet each and every one of them any way they want it any time at any place you put the date you say where the ones do they want it I will be there 100% but right now my arm needs to get recuperated. It needs 100% recuperation, and that's what I'm gonna give it. In case you uh, you missed it out there in a very part of it, um, it it's the ligaments. Uh, yeah, Hector really was lucky in the fact that, that his arm was not broken. It was It's really painful, and it has been giving some problems. They've tried to keep it, keep it immobilized because uh, tore some ligaments in there. Hector Guerrero, and we're glad at least that he's getting along to the extent that he is. We've got more action coming up on Championship Wrestling. We'll be back to it in just a moment. Yeah. He is, he is indisposed with knots and so forth. He didn't want to ruin his pretty illusion. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of the, the story. Uh, Jerry Lawler had a match in Louisville, Kentucky, at the Louisville Gardens with um, Ken Lucas. I think most of you probably remember Ken. Uh, Ken, a real scrapper. He wrestled uh, here with Championship Wrestling some time ago with his partner, Dennis Hall. Uh, they were an excellent young tag team. Ken is seasoned, and he's just a really tough, fine wrestler. He had a match with Jerry the King Lawler. It, it originally started uh, uh, the first battle that Lawler had with him was in Birmingham, Alabama, and, and uh, Lawler wrestled him in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, the Jarrett Welch cameras, I want you to watch this entire thing, because the Jarrett Welch cameras, we talked to Ken Lucas before the bout, understand, before the bout in the Louisville Gardens. Uh, let's hear what Kenny had to say. Louisville, Kentucky wrestling fans, next Tuesday night at Louisville Gardens, a great card of action has been signed. The main event, the CWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jerry Lawler. He'll be taking on this man that is with me right now, Ken Lucas. Ken, it's a non-title match. You'll t you're taking on the man that is the epitome of wrestling, the world heavyweight champion. Uh, let me say one thing about Jerry Lawler. I've seen uh, a lot of uh, things with him in the magazines. I've uh, got to watch his style on TV a lot of times, and the man is a, is a very, very a good champion, and uh, I have a lot of respect for the man. And I know what I'm going to have to do when I go in the ring with him, that uh, he's a very, very tough man. Uh, he asks no quarter, he gives no quarter, and I'm going in to do one thing, Michael. If I get a win over him, then I've got a chance to go for that CWA uh, championship, the World's Championship belt, and I know that's what I've got to do. Well, the one thing about Jerry Lawler, like, he is the champion, but he has been known to bend the rules some, Ken. Well, any time I think that things get hot and heavy in a championship match or an untitled match, it's like I say, the man is the champion, and I know that uh, he will a lot of times uh, stick up for his rights to keep that belt. That's what does make a champion. And uh, I know my wrestling very well. I expect to have a very, very hard uh, wrestling match with him, but if things do get hot and heavy, I've been known to lose my uh, temper, too, and I can uh, get pretty rough, too, my friend. Well, Jerry Lawler has uh, gained the title since winning the title from superstar Billy Graham. He has defended it against some of the top mat stars around the world. And, of course, uh, a win for you at Louisville Gardens next Tuesday night would be very, very credible and hopefully would get you a shot at that title. That's correct. Like I say, the world the man is the uh, CWA, a world uh, heavyweight champion. And if I uh, do beat him this week, I'm sure that I will have a title shot, and I'm looking forward to that. Best of luck to you, Ken. That's at the Louisville Gardens this coming Tuesday night. All you wrestling fans in Louisville, be sure to see Jerry the King Lawler, the CWA world heavyweight champion. He'll take on Ken Lucas in that big main event. And, of course, this will be a non-title match. Ken, the best of luck to you. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in Louisville Tuesday night. Thank you. Michael St. John reporting from Louisville.
Okay, thank you, Michael. In that uh, conversation, bear in mind, uh, as, that, as I said, that was before the match. That wasn't the only comment that was made before the match. Uh, as you can imagine, the King had a comment to, uh, or two to make about it. Let's take a listen to Jerry Lawler. This coming Tuesday night, Louisville, Kentucky wrestling fans are in store for a great card of action, one of the biggest main events ever signed as the CWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jerry the King Lawler will take on Ken Lucas. The match will be a non-title affair. And Jerry, Ken Lucas coming to Louisville, Kentucky to take you on. It'll be a non-title match. You're the champion. What have you got to say? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Michael, what I got to say. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't, I, can't, I can't stand here and try to tell you people that Ken Lucas are, is a great wrestler or that I think he's a good wrestler. And I know there's nothing more that you would like to hear or that the Louisville promoters would like to hear or the fans out there because I guess Ken Lucas is obviously the best talent you have available in this area. But it's not right for me, the world heavyweight champion, to stand here and tell you people a lie. To be perfectly honest with you, I never heard of Ken Lucas before I signed this match. He should be arrested for impersonating a wrestler and probably will when he comes to town. And I realize the promoters would like for me to stand here and give this guy some credibility because, you know, they, they want to get a lot of people to come to see this match. But the truth of the matter is, you know, beating Ken Lucas will probably be a piece of cake for me because he's, he's obviously not in the top ten uh, ranked uh, contenders. He is uh, not a world-class wrestler. I've never seen anything about him in the magazines. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I just don't, uh, I've never heard of Ken Lucas, so I can't stand out here and tell you people that it's going to be a tough match. I know, uh, I know you'd probably like to hear that. You probably think Ken Lucas is a good wrestler. But what you don't know is that I am the greatest wrestler in the world today, and beating Ken Lucas will be a joke. Well, Jerry, those are some very strong words. Now, I've heard a lot about Ken Lucas. I hear he comes in with some outstanding credentials, and the man uh, could win, could upset you. You're right here in Louisville, Tuesday man. Louisville. I mean, you know, what is Louisville, Kentucky? It's a little local yokel hick town, and uh, you probably have heard a lot about Ken Lucas, but I'm traveling all over the world now that I've won this title, and I have heard absolutely nothing about Ken Lucas. I've been to Japan. I've been all over the world, and the name Ken Lucas never comes up. He is not, like I said before, a world-class wrestler. He is a local Louisville yokel. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry to tell you people this, but uh, this is probably going to be the biggest joke of my career. The comments of the very controversial heavyweight champion of the Continental Wrestling Association, the King Jerry Lawler. This coming Tuesday night, he'll take on Ken Lucas right here in Louisville, Kentucky, at Louisville Gardens. The matches start promptly at 8 o'clock. We'll see you then. Okay. There it is. Now, that was all before the match. I'm not going to tell you anything about the match. I want you to watch the next piece of tape that we caught with the uh, Jarrett Welch cameras. Uh, this was at home with Jerry Lawler after the match was over with. Let's just take a look. Well, I'm sure you idiots really love this. You're really getting your laughs out there right now looking at me, aren't you? You, Lance Russell, and all the rest of you jerks out there watching. Well, you just laugh it up. I know what you're thinking. Look at that, boy. Somebody finally got to the king. This is what we've been waiting to see for a long time. And Ken Lucas, I know you're feeling like a real big shot right now. Boy, you messed up the world champion's face. Well, let me just say something to you, Ken Lucas. You don't make no reputation off of me, punk. I want you to understand that right now. You just got things started. And I'm going to be the man to finish it. And let me just tell you what's going to take place now. I want you to take a good, close look at this face. This is the prettiest face in wrestling. I ain't never had nothing done like this to me before. I've been put in a hospital. I've had bones broken. I've had internal bleeding. But I ain't never had my face messed up like this, Lucas. Do you understand me, punk? And I ain't going to put up with it either. Now, when you get down there Sunday, let me tell you what you better do between now and then. You better have your damn picture made every time you can get to a camera, Lucas, because when I get through with you, you ain't going to look the same, punk. I'm going to rearrange your face permanently. It ain't going to never heal up when I get through with you. You're going to pay ten times over for every drop of blood that I lost, for every lump you put on my face. You're going to get ten, Lucas. Do you understand that? You just be there Sunday, punk, because like I said, you just started things, and I'm going to finish it. It's been a long time since I've had a real fight in Memphis, and I'm going to have one Sunday, and you're going to be on the receiving end of it, punk. The King didn't feel like being with us in person today. He had those comments to make. I don't have to tell you how the bout came out. Ken Lucas really worked him over, and uh, the return match, <clears throat> pardon me, uh,
has been signed uh, in uh, Memphis tomorrow afternoon. Two o'clock is the time. Jerry Lawler uh, will bring a rather beat up frame in there to uh, go against Ken Lucas and it'll be a doggone fine match. Let me give you the entire card. First, let me say that you can get your tickets all day up until uh, five o'clock today for the action tomorrow afternoon at the Mid-South Coliseum at 2 p.m. You can get them till five o'clock. Ticket office will be open at nine o'clock and will be open, of course, all the way up until two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Opening bout at two is going to have Dennis Condry coming back into town. And he's going to be going against Paul Correa. Then the second match will also have the return of uh, David Schultz. You remember David. And he will be going against the fine athlete out of Indianapolis, Steve Regal. A uh, tag match. It's going to be a return match. It should be some kind of a bout, too. When Big Red, and you'll get a little better understanding in case you weren't there Monday night. Big Red and Rick Morton will be going against Kojo Yamamoto and Sonny King as his partner. And then there will be an AWA tag title match when the defending champions, the Assassins, will be putting the belt on the line uh, against a guy who um, will have lots of things in store for them. Billy Robinson and his partner, Paul Ellering. We, uh, if we hear anything on Billy, of course, as I said, we'll bring you up to date on that. Billy Robinson, Paul Ellering going in a title match, not a non-title bout. This will be for the AWA Southern Tag title against the Assassins. And then... The final match of the afternoon is going to be a bout between Jerry the King Lawler and Ken Lucas, that poor nobody that Lawler referred to who did quite a number on Lawler's face in there. That action is going to take place tomorrow right there in the Mid-South Coliseum, and we hope maybe you'll have an opportunity to be right out there with us at 2 p.m. for the action. Get your tickets up until 5 o'clock today. We got more action right here, and we're going to be about, well, wait, 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 hold it. I know you came to tell me to comb my hair. I can't. It no, won't no, comb. Oh, I <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just talking with uh, Jerry Jarrett. They do not know the extent of Billy Robinson's uh, arm injury right now, but he will not be able to wrestle tomorrow. However, he has been in contact with the Gibson brothers, and they're going to be here to take on the oh, assassin. Hey. Okay. Well, as an update, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, so kind of let that as it is. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about Billy but suspected as much when we saw what happened in there. Again, we'll be back with more wrestling action on Championship Wrestling in just a moment. We got some more action coming up that I think you're going to be interested in seeing. Let's take a look as the Jerry Welch cameras caught about between Tojo Yamamoto and uh, his partner, Sonny King, going against Big Red and Rick Morton. Please pay attention because there's a very good object lesson here. We've told you people, don't get carried away, stay away from the ring. Take a look at this action right here. Morton, sunset flip, one. All he got was a one count, and there's a tag on Big Red. came ready to fight. Puts Tojo down. Red with Tojo in the corner, pounding on him. Into the corner. And red, oh no. 355 pounds. Tojo rolls down to the floor and staggers away. participant in this tag match as a spectator got over enthusiastic climbed into the ring and 
and Sonny King went to work on him. Sonny King from behind with a reverse face lock. Referee Jerry Calhoun was working to get him out of there. Sonny was pounding on him. He felt some of the King wrath. Sonny hanging on to that reverse face lock. Martin. We're at the uh, six minute and 45 second period in the match. It's a one fall 45 minute time limit. So there's plenty of time in the bout. Morton fired out of the ring. And he he was really out on this concrete floor. Bounced off the table. Big Red comes over to protect him. Morton hit the floor hard and hit the table out here. Seven and a half minutes in and Rick Morton really bounced off that concrete floor. Red puts him back in the ring before the count, and Sonny King goes to work on him. Tojo from the outside being eyed heavily by the referee, and Rick Morton wishing he were on the outside. Woo, eight minutes in, King really nails Morton. Tojo a chop, and Morton almost went through the ropes. He was fired into those ropes so hard, he almost went out the other side. Tojo moves the hands and fires the foot, and now a chop. Rick Morton in tough shape, a long way away from Big Red. All the way over, almost in Yamamoto and King's corner. He goes. Morton firing his way back. What a scrappy young fella this guy is. Tojo hounds him. Tag Sonny King. him off the ropes over here. Hounds him right in the chest. Again, knocks him into referee Jerry Calhoun. Sonny, with his protege, really treating him hard. Uh. Rick Trump. Pulls up and kicks King back. Yamamoto from behind. Headbutt from Sonny King. Ojo slams a jab right at the throat. Rick Morton. Yamamoto takes over. 
after a tag from Sonny King. Big Red comes through the ropes. Referee trying to get him outside. Here comes King down the ropes. Tojo slams Rick Morton on this side of the ring. Referee trying to get Sonny back in his corner now. Red out of the ring, and now the referee getting Sonny around the corner. Trying to keep the Big Red and Sonny King apart. Tojo chopping, jabbing, slamming Rick Morton around. Morton through the legs, trying to get away. Tags Big Red. Here come the big guns. three count but Sonny King speared him with that head while he was covering Tojo Yamamoto Sonny and Big Red going at it and it's Red with a referee in between turns around Tojo nails him with salt in the eyes it looked like three that's it 12 minutes, 27 seconds. And the winners are going to be King and Yamamoto. Yeah, but not without a battle, I'll tell you for a fact in there. Okay, that was Sonny King, Tojo, Yamamoto, Big Red, and Rick Morton in there. Some kind of scrap, and uh, Tojo hadn't changed no. a whole lot. No, we got more action coming up, and as a matter of fact, we're going to have a chance to see Tojo and Sonny King in the ring right after we take time out for this. Yeah, that's right. Watch you. Where's the camera at? What do you, oh, wait a minute. Get a good shot of this. Good looking camera lady. Get a good shot of this. Get a, you get a good shot of this picture. You what in what the world saying? is that? African cowboy. Oh, African cowboy. Hey, Sonny. African cowboy. You know what, Lance? When they saw me come out here and hog tied the elephant, they said, you are a cowboy. Being a third generation African in this country and not denying the United States, I brought both the flags out here, man. I am going to turn professional wrestling around in the Mid-South area, man, in the Mid-South area. Just like I've done when I first came here, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to show you, man. I was afraid of that, Sonny. Okay. I'm going to leave a, I'm going to let me switch on you. Uh, oh, swell. We have a new uh, championship wrestling emblem out this there. This is class four. Yeah. That's class four, man. Okay. That's class okay, four. Okay, Sonny, please. Thank you. Sonny King. Well. This is television. I can't yeah. That's great, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Love it. I got my ticket already bought. I hope you have. <laughs> With that as our desk emblem. All right, here we go. All right, this is going to be a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match, introducing at a total weight of 467 pounds on the left of your screen. From Japan, Tojo Yamamoto, his partner from McCall, Louisiana, Sonny King. At a total weight of 445 pounds on the right of your screen. From Union City, Tennessee, Coco Ware, and from Indianapolis, Indiana, Steve Regal. This match one fall, 15-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. You know, Davey, uh, I, I probably, in all honesty, have been a little remiss uh, in, in this bell time. The fact of uh, the pairing of Tojo Yamamoto and Sonny King, we really haven't said a whole lot about. Uh, uh, we've used the word formidable teams. Boy, if it has ever been used accurately before, it really can be now because the, the only question I have is not the individual ability, whether these guys can work together as a team because they both can be so mean they just may end up... Uh, sus Sonny's not going to wrestle. Last, I He's just came out here to add some color yeah. to this TV out here. I was thinking that if I came out here and, and sat out here, the people would know that Tokyo Yamamoto doesn't need any help, really, you know? 
Now, what's going to hit? Yeah. Watch well, your trick. Oh, yeah. This won't happen, eh? That's fine, Sonny. You just stay right out here and leave Tojo by himself. Tojo can handle himself, right? One. Sonny in that 100-yard dash to the ring. Boy, he is so quick for a big guy. He is. He saved the uh, three count there. He speared Coco. I guess Sonny's decided to uh, participate in the match after all. At the moment, he's given up his career as a broadcaster, but unfortunately, he'll think of it again. That's very true. Sonny and Coco battling each other. Back in the corner, referee is there trying to get him to open the fist. Both of them using fist. Look Coco. at that, Coco. Yeah. He used the drag, pulled him right across the ring. Coco wades into the corner after him. Fired him into the turnbuckle. But as Coco went in after him, Sonny King was coming out with his foot high. Coco. Off the ropes after the whip. Spear by Sonny King. Sonny with a tag on Tojo Yamamoto. Chest, just picked Coco off his feet and set him on the mat. Tojo makes the tag. Sonny King back in. Oh, oh, oh. Fist right to the chin. Coco was able to get the tag though, and here's Steve Regal. Regal went for the drop kick. Sonny King hung back on the rope. I was watching Coco when he climbed out of the ring after that right hand. He almost fell over backward on his head. He is out on his feet, in effect. Oh, what a shot he got from Sonny King. Steve Regal battling Sonny. Sonny's made a tag. Tojo through the rope in the ring. He chopped Steve Regal down to the mat. Tojo off his feet. Upper arm. And Tojo hits the mat, rolls to the corner, and with some difficulty tags Sonny King. Tojo got his head popped pretty hard from Steve Regal. Steve makes the tag. And there's Coco Ware coming back in. It's Coco against Sonny King. Coco with his head cleared a little bit now. He, uh... Be interesting to see how he goes in there with Sonny after Sonny really rattled his bones with that right hand. Sonny working on him. It looks like he's choking him. His hand across Coco's face, mouth and nose. Can't breathe. Sonny takes him over to the corner, tags Tojo. Sonny King holding Coco Ware. Tojo with a chop. Oh, oh. another one. That hurt over here. Coco able to kick Tojo back. Fires the right hand to the midsection. Follows with another on his feet. Coco drop kick Sonny over in the corner. Sonny hung onto the rope. Coco 
Yamamoto with Tojo Yamamoto in the headlock. Over to the corner. Steve Regal in after the tag. Tojo whipped into the rope. Regal waiting. Cover. One. Two. Tojo is able to break it at the two count. We're six minutes into the action. Tojo into the rope. Caught himself and comes back with a chop. Boy, I tell you, Tojo's chop has lost none of its power. You got that right. Sonny King puts Regal into the rope. Sonny stomp to the midsection. Got a face lock. I hate to disappoint the fans, but Steve ain't going nowhere, boy, when you got big Sonny King hanging on. Okay. He had the face lock, which was legal. Steve's really not going anywhere right now because Sonny's got that hand wrapped around his throat, choking the steel out of it. Tojo Yamamoto down the apron. Thank you. Thank you. Now back to the face lock. There's Sonny King. Tojo halfway down the apron again. Referee trying to get him back to the corner. Seven minutes, 15 seconds gone. Look out. Tojo's got a wooden shoe in his hand. Mm, right in the back. He nails Steve Regal. Sonny King and Coco tied up on the other side of the ring. Sonny throws Coco out of the ring between the ropes. King backs to the corner. He got the tag. Tojo will be coming in. With a chop, he comes in. Boy, Regal and Coco both have really been taking a beating from these guys all the way through the match. Coco in there after the tag. He's been resting in the corner for a while. Boy, he is ready to go. King tied him up back on the rope. Oh! He oh. caught him half in the, in the chest, throat, and right on the side of the jaw, and his mouth just went sideways, Dave. I'm surprised that Coco is on his feet. Oh, he was thrown over the top rope. Referee didn't see it, though. Referee was trying to get uh, Tojo back to the corner. But Sonny picked up Coco and threw him over the top rope. If the referee had seen it, that would have been disqualification right there. Coco back in the ring now. Not in great shape. Sonny King throws him over the rope again. Regal trying to get to Sonny King. Referee Jerry Calhoun trying to keep him separated. Regal, not the legal man in the ring. It's Coco, who has been thrown over the top rope twice by Sonny King, but both times the referee was trying to get the other traffic straightened out and didn't see it. Nine minutes, 40 seconds gone. Coco tied up in the corner by Sonny King and Tojo. 